What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Open Door Creative. Today, we're taking a drive with Braylon here, also known as the Copy Samurai. That is I. That is him. So, uh, yeah, it's a little rainy today, so hopefully it doesn't f*** with the audio too much, but uh, we'll get started. So, Braylon, the first question I ask everyone um, is how they got into advertising. How did you get into this crazy game that we're in? It all started when I was three years old and I first picked up a pencil and I wish that was the true story. <laughs> um, I grew up drawing just because as I'm the copy samurai, right. I watched a lot of anime. So just grew up drawing anime. I kind of had a dabbling in design and, you know, a few other things like my Instagram. I had like a like slight fashion stint mm -hmm. where I used to actually draw the retro cartoons and everything. Nice, like jeans nice. And wear them around. So yep. I always liked that aspect of my creativity and I wanted to bring it to a professional realm. But when I was applying to the University of Miami back in 2014, I wanted to take it the architectural perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I was growing up, always loved math, and I was like, well, if I can combine math with drawing, you know, maybe that's good money, that's design. Yep. I can have the best of both worlds. Did my first semester of architecture and did not enjoy it at all. After architecture, I moved on to Undecided, but it was around that same time that I found creative advertising amongst like the different uh, majors at my school. And I was like, well, you know, I always wanted to do something with design. So yeah. maybe it'd be a good minor just to like do the graphic design part of it. So yep. made that my minor. As far as major from undecided, I went to business, tried to do finance and accounting. Numbers did not agree with me. After that, literally semester after, I jumped to computer science and I was like, you know, my mom did IT, mm -hmm. maybe coding runs in the family and my grandfather did IT for Disney for 30 years. So I'm like, you know, maybe it's in the blood. It's hereditary. It is, yeah. but Java was not, so I <laughs> left it alone. And yeah. then this was about the beginning of my junior year where I said, you know, I need a major. I've had creative advertising as my minus the entire time. Mm -hmm. Let me just go ahead and make it my major. Once I started getting the major classes, that's when I really started to fall in love with it. I took graphic design one, which was cool. I didn't like Photoshop. <laughs> there were two classes mm -hmm. that I took. The first one was our intro to copywriting class. Because okay. after that graphic design class, I was like, yay, I was so gung-ho. And I got it. I did it. And I was like, yeah, no, maybe creative advertising is not for me either. But let's try writing. Yeah. Um, I had a professor named Terry Belasia. He, super cool guy, many great feats. He worked for Saatchi and Saatchi for many years. Uh -huh. he, I think his biggest accolade that he tells us is he named Call of Duty. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's sick. That's a sweet accolade. Like, you can retire on that. Honestly, uh, he was my professor for intro to writing. He was just a great guy, great guy to learn from. Uh, there was a cross-cultural advertising class, which really got me into multicultural advertising. Cool. Yeah. Um, from there, I just started to fall in love with the craft. But I'm like, well, you know, this is something I really want to do. I see other people being successful, but yeah. I have two years left. How do I do it all and be successful as I can? From there, it was really just really dedicating myself to studying and learning the ins and outs of advertising on my own, learning, you know, what um, award shows are out there for juniors, mm -hmm. like young shits, finding different resources, like make ads with me, like yep. just finding everything that I can that's going to put me in a position to be successful in what I love and what I want to do and yeah, just so, keep going for it. So really quick, so I, I think it's very interesting that you started on such a design-oriented path. Yeah. Like you were, you were in architecture design, then you went to graphic design one, and then you made that switch. So was that copywriting class like the aha moment? Like is that where you're like, ah, like were you always a good writer or was this like the start and you're like, oh, like maybe I can do this. That's a great thing. question. Uh, so the copywriting class was the aha moment because although I focus more on the design, uh -huh. I, I won't say that I've always naturally been a good writer, but writing has always come I don't want to say easy for me, but it's come well for me. I've yeah. always been able to churn out, you know, at least one or two good lines, like a long essay, like uh -huh. lines so good, professors would be like, that is a beautiful sentence. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. And I never really like took, like took charge to it or like, you know, I never really just like paid attention to it. But once I kind of like brought that to everyone, I was like, oh, you can make an actual career out of just writing things like this. That's when it was like, huh, maybe something that I haven't really focused on. Yeah should be my main focus now to really see how I can develop it. Yeah, that's cool. So I think that's a very interesting lesson in itself is that like there's many students who watch the channel and they have an idea of kind of what they want to do, but you got to let yourself experiment and do other things, especially if you're in college, like that's the time to just take all sorts of shit and see what sticks. Very true. Because it could lead your life and what you want to do next. You know? Honestly, definitely always got to be experimental because even once I decided to be on the copy track, at that point, I went all into my writing. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna pick up this marketing minor so you know I can learn the marketing side of writing. I'm gonna pick up this interactive media minor, yeah. which is like that stem into film and yeah. coding. So I 
do a little bit of film on the side, cool. radio spots, all that. And of course, a women and gender studies minor because as we come into advertising and the game is changing when it comes to diverse when it comes to diverse perspectives and yep. representation. You want yep. to be able to write from those different perspectives and also just have that background on being able to understand these different issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. I came down to two opportunities. There was a Young Shits brief that I actually got shortlisted for, uh -huh. and that opened an opportunity um, around the end of March to actually interview with Droga5 cool. for cool. an internship, because they called me and everything. I was like, this is super cool. I'm so excited. Yeah. But at the same time, I had also gotten an opportunity from the Marcus Graham Project. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up choosing the Marcus Graham Project, and it was probably the best experience I could ever have. Uh, I came in as one of 13 on the team. Uh, copywriter, of course. Um, I got to work on Google and Hennessy throughout this past summer. Oh, that's cool. Tell tell everyone a little bit about the Marcus Graham Project because oh. it's a really cool, you know, organization, and and not many people know about it. So I really want to get that out there, um, you know, into the world. The Marcus Graham Project. If the close, the thing that you can compare the Marcus Graham Project closest to is literally running your own agency. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to the nitty gritty of the Marcus Graham Project, I would say that their core is mentorship. Like literally you come in and you have at least four different mentors. The Marcus Graham Project right now has three different kind of flagship boot camps that go on throughout different times. The flagship boot camp is the one that I just did this summer in Dallas. They also just started a new one this past summer out in San Francisco. And then this winter, which applications are out right now, um, they have one that will be in LA, partnered with Kastner Agency. Um, and when it comes to these different, of course, the different offices that you're in, you get two mentors there and you get two mentors a part of Marcus Graham Project. Another foundation of the Marcus Graham Project is family. Like once you get into the program, you really are like my brother, my sister, yeah. whatever you it's want. It's a fraternity, yeah. It's, in a sense, it is a fraternity. Yeah. Like we are all super close. We're all looking out for each other. We connect each other as much as we can, and at the end of the day, it's about the work. You come in and you get to produce great work for great clients. Like These are just opportunities you cannot ever pass up. Yep. Like, I don't know where I would be right now without the Marcus Graham Project. I wouldn't be here right now yeah. without the Marcus Graham Project. Well, I love the mentorship aspect because I think early on in anyone's career, mentorship is so important because quite frankly people just don't know what they're really getting into very true so having a bunch of people who have been there and can lead you can help you grow so much faster than you would otherwise so exactly i think that's i mean having four is sick like <laughs> that's so legit because even because the other thing about mentorship that's interesting is you really connect with some people and it's a very easy fit mentor wise and then exactly. some you're like oh, you know, like I can learn some things for sure, but maybe you just don't connect as much. So mm -hmm. having four just broadens the ability to change in all aspects of your life, whether they're helping you professionally, personally, like, exactly. you know, it's, that's cool. With, but with the Marcus yeah. Graham Project, you get the entire directory of alumni from the beginning. So yeah. I personally had a mentor who I didn't fully mesh with. Yeah. It was easy for me to say, you know, let me go through this directory. Oh, you know, so-and-so is over at this agency. That's yeah. where I'm interested in. I can call them up. Hey, would you mind talking to me about you know, culture of this agency, would yeah. you mind talking me through, you know, what you do, what would be the process to get in, what can I learn from you, like, it's super dope. Yeah, that's sick. After Mercury Grand Project, I ended up at Tracy Lock, but I will tell you how I ended up at Tracy Lock. <laughs> TL all day, lockers. I was the person who am emailing everybody I can, trying to get as many connections as I can. One of my strategies when it comes to networking is I always love to use my school's alumni from the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. I gave a call to a woman named Lauren Cooper. She was at Johannes Leonardo. She was a former, she was formerly at Johannes Leonardo at mm -hmm. the time. I think she was looking for work somewhere else. Um, and she actually, we had a great conversation. She connected me to Allison Burzla, mm -hmm. over who's my senior writer now. Yep. I love getting ahead of myself. <laughs> also at the same time, um, I started talking to the, well, not started, but I knew the different people in my group for the Marcus Graham Project, and Munir, my video producer, he actually interned at Tracy Lock literally the summer before, yep. and he knew Munir Allison. actually interviewed me for the channel. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, all these connections just coming together. Um, so I get to know them, and then finally with Marcus Graham Project, another part of it is you get to tour to different agencies in your area. We actually toured Tracy Lock. Um, I want to say the day that we particularly came, Allison was fairly busy. Didn't get to find her until the very end, but she gave me her email and I just started emailing her. 
Of course, this piece of advice, always remember when you're trying to get into the advertising industry, people are busy. Yeah. And persistence is key. And when I say persistence, because I know a lot of us may call ourselves persistent, I'm not saying two or three emails. Yeah. With Allison, I knew her workload was heavy. I emailed her no less than 11 times throughout the entire summer. Yeah. And I may have gotten two answers. The first answer was, definitely let's try and schedule something, um, which fell through. And the second answer was, uh, she responded to me right after the program had ended. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh man, I'm so sorry that, you know, we didn't get a good time to get together. Maybe we can schedule a call now that I'm back home in Orlando and, you know, I have a little bit more free time to work on your schedule. Um, maybe about a week after that, she sends me, yeah, cool. I would love to hop on a call with you. Also, um, a position just opened up at Tracy Lock. Mm-hmm. Here's the application. And I was like, you know, okay, I've applied like 20 Sick. jobs. What's yeah. number 21 going to do? Yeah. Probably two weeks after that. I got a call from Kelly Jensen, recruiter Tracy Locke, and yeah. I was like, okay, they want to talk to me. Cool. I didn't know it was an interview. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, that's even better. There's no pressure. I, it was no pressure at yeah. all. I feel, yeah, I just called to have a conversation and just get to know you. What did you do with Marcus Graham Project? What did you do with previous uh, experiences like Orange Umbrella, which was a student agency at University of Miami that I was a copywriter and creative uh-huh. director at? Um, and from there, literally, it was a cool conversation. She was like, I want to move you up to the CD. And I was like, huh? <laughs> nice. Okay, sure. But... From there, it goes recruiter. I interviewed Blaine, my CD, love him to death. He's very into my growth. Yeah, Got he's cool. He's a good guy. Team. Mm-hmm. And now I'm here. Awesome, <laughs> man. And I think it's really funny because, you know, I don't expect everyone to watch all the videos, but for anyone who has, you might notice this guy from, I did a random video about Make Ads With Me, a place you go to find, you know, fellow art director, copywriter partners. And I was just showing how the site kind of works and I clicked on a random profile. It could have been anybody. Um, And it was a guy named the Copy Samurai. And so when this guy (laughs) got there and they're like, oh, you know, this guy is the Copy Samurai stuff. I was like, wait, like that's super familiar, you know? And I like went back and saw the video and I was like, that is crazy. Like some random profile I clicked on is now working with me like at, you know, at my agency. So I just thought that was- make ads with me to make ads with Kev. (laughs) That's right, that's right. So it's just, I thought that was super crazy to me. So um, for those trying to get into advertising, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are like, how do I do it? Like, how do I navigate this journey? Like, how do I break in? Like, Mm -hmm. what advice do you have for those people? Oh, when it comes to breaking in, like I've already said before, be persistent. Don't be afraid to constantly email. Don't. It doesn't matter if you feel annoying. At the end of the day, you're looking for the job and they're missing out on your talent. Mm-hmm. You have to promote yourself as much as you can, as long as you can, until you get what you need to do. Brand yourself differently, and that's how you stand out of a pack of applicants. But also with that, when you brand yourself differently, have a reason behind it. Um, I had lunch with Allison maybe three weeks ago and we actually spoke with my interview and she said one of the reasons that they really liked it is because I had a very in-depth concept behind why I'm the copy samurai and why this idea of what a samurai is connects back to copywriting and honestly I had an epiphany the other day I was like wow being a samurai really is just advertising at its heart yeah there's design there's strategy there's storytelling within the battles it's mm-hmm. it's everything so yeah. always brand yourself away from everybody else don't just be you know my portfolio is this do something or be something weird show your creativity show who you are great advice so um is there anything you would like to plug i'll plug myself first as he said i'm the copy samurai you can find my portfolio at copysamurai.com i'm always willing to talk to people look at portfolios work with people so if you ever need a resource as a writer or as a director reach out to me um like I said before, Marcus Graham project applications for the LA boot camp are out right now, so definitely go check those out. Nice. Um, they close November 14th, I believe. Oh, get on it. I want to shout out my fellow copywriter from this summer, Heather Gaskell. She has a blog for all the women looking to look for mentorship at advertising. It's called Bitches with Pitches. Check that you out. You said Bitches with Pitches? Bitches with Pitches. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Lots of good insight for people, I think. And uh, until next time. Until we'll next see you time. later. Peace.